It feels like nowadays, companies face scandals on a weekly basis. While a lot of the issues are most likely internal and never see the light of day, it's always interesting when a company has a massive marketing blunder. And this is not a new phenomenon by any means. We've seen it before with Pepsi and Kendall Jenner, or how about Gillette and masculinity? Well this time we have none other than Bud Light, a well-known water company that's recently come under fire following their most recent marketing campaign. Now whether you think the backlash is great, or stupid, or you're like me and you don't really care all that much, like come on, let's not act like Bud Light was good beer to begin with. I wanted to make this video to go over a key lesson that we can all learn from this, regardless of how you feel about the controversy itself. So with all that said, if you feel really passionately about this, or you have anything to add, feel free to leave your thoughts in the comments below. Or if you just want to argue with people in the comments, I mean, that's your, if that's your thing, you can do that as well. Anyways, let's take a look at how we got here. I know by now most of you already know the full story, but here's the gist of what happened. In July of 2022, Bud Light introduced their new VP of Marketing, Alyssa Heinerscheid. Fast forward to March 2023, Alyssa does an interview with a show called Make Yourself at Home. Now this interview would go on to be what I think is the biggest factor in the company's scandal. Alyssa states that the company has been in decline for a long time and that they want to appeal to young drinkers. Otherwise, there will be no future for the brand. What she goes on to say next is what bothered a lot of existing customers. So I'll let you watch this clip in its entirety. And representation is at sort of the heart of evolution. You've got to see people who reflect you in the work. And we had this hangover. I mean, Bud Light had been kind of a brand of bratty, kind of out of touch humor. And it was really important <laughs> that we had another approach. Strangely enough, I didn't really see this video go viral until the following month of April 2023, when Bud Light announced that they would be doing a sponsorship with social media star and transgender activist Dylan Mulvaney. Now, Dylan Mulvaney was no stranger to criticism and controversy. After collaborating on a podcast for Ulta Beauty and even interviewing Joe Biden, Dylan was already a subject of contention for a lot of people. Of course, you had people who didn't like Dylan for, well, to keep this YouTube friendly, I'll say more extreme reasons while others felt like Dylan's sudden success was undeserved and kind of suspicious. Now that just about sums up the background info you need, let's take a look at. Following the announcement and release of Bud Light's promotional video starring Dylan Mulvaney, plenty of people took to social media to air out their dissatisfaction with the brand, with a lot of people feeling like choosing Dylan as the face of the brand was out of touch and proved that the company didn't really know or care about their consumers. Now. As with the most controversies, of course you'll have some extreme opinions on this, but I'm gonna stick to what I consider the more reasonable ones. Anyways, to make matters worse, Alyssa's interview started to resurface as people did some more digging into the company. And sure enough, that clip I showed you earlier went viral as well, with a lot of Bud Light's customers saying that they actually felt personally attacked or insulted. And if you were on social media around this time, then you would know what came out of this. Now it's obvious that this whole backlash was received by upper management because the CEO would actually go on to release a statement, although many disgruntled customers weren't satisfied with it. But Bud Light wasn't going down without a fight. In a weird turn of events, Bud Light would go on to release a commercial that would try to appeal to their frustrated customers. Let me tell you a story about- Unfortunately for them, it was too little too late. And the commercial didn't really resonate with people like they thought it would. This is the story of the American spirit. Oh, Shut the God. fuck up. Wow. Shut the fuck up. Holy now shit. I hate you more. <laughs> <laughs> like, what are you, you doing? Can't. Honestly, to me, this kind of just seems like an AI generated commercial, but that's besides the point. And usually, when there's controversy of this proportion, you more or less know that someone's going to lose their job. And the Bud Light boycott was no exception. On April 21st of 2023, it was reported that Alyssa was taking a leave of absence from her role. Now this could mean that she was canned, or taking a break from what I imagine is probably a really stressful position to be in right now. Honestly, it is hard to say, so let me know what you guys think in the comments below. After her leave was announced though, the company was able to turn things around and everything worked out in the end. Now, nah, just kidding. Alyssa's boss, Daniel Blake, who was the head honcho who oversaw marketing for Anheuser-Busch's main brands like Bud Light and Budweiser, would also go on to take a leave of absence. Now at the time of making this video, no other people have been put on leave or resigned, so only time will tell if this will be a continuing trend. As for the brand's financials, I've seen plenty of numbers being published, so I'll post some of them here as well. So now that we're all cut up to speed, 
First, let's assume that all these reports regarding the company's financials are accurate. Cause well if they're not then this video is kind of irrelevant. This whole boycott highlights something I've actually said in a video I uploaded earlier this year. I'll play that clip quickly here. As much as gaming is an art, and all the people that come together and work on them are artists, they both belong to one collective, known as a company. And companies speak one language. I see some of the most popular video games like FIFA and 2K, even GTA 5, get met with backlash almost on a cyclical basis. Whether it be that the game is too similar to the last one, or that it's obvious the developers are getting greedy and lazy. The issue though is that these complaints and backlash might have some impact, but it's not nearly as loud as speaking with your wallet. I constantly see people demanding change from companies time and time again, but in order for these companies to hear you, you've got to learn to speak their language. And as I've mentioned before, companies want to make more money, there's really no way around that. So if you take that away, you force their hand into changing their methods. And this is especially true for publicly traded companies that are subjected to the opinions of shareholders. Now, let's make something clear. Companies losing money is a bit more nuanced than people make it out to be. Usually when a company's fiscal performance isn't up to par, then layoffs and other cost-cutting measures are soon to follow. I bring this up in part to say that I don't think this falls on the shoulders of the customers though. If a customer no longer wants your product, regardless of the reason, then that's on you as a business. Let's get back to the lesson. I mentioned earlier that I personally don't really care about this whole boycott. I didn't drink Bud Light to begin with that much, so I don't have a dog in this fight. But it is nice to see that people are reminded of how they can stick it to companies that they feel have wronged them. Yes, I know depending on how you view the situation, this might sound hyperbolic. But if the customers feel that way, then that's their prerogative. Seeing people come together against something they don't agree with by withholding their hard-earned money gives me hope that people will slowly learn that they're able to voice their concerns in ways that they may have not otherwise thought was possible. It's a reminder that these companies aren't immune. And again, if you think that this boycott was stupid, apply this to whatever company you see fit. It could be a company that goes against your morals or ethics, or a company whose mission statement you don't agree with. Whatever your reason may be, the Bud Light boycott should serve as a nice reminder for anyone and everyone that while it may seem like we have a David and Goliath type of relationship going on here, you gotta remember that at the end of the day, these companies rely on you and me to keep them afloat. So the best way you can get your message across is by speaking with your dollars. No matter where you fall on this issue, I hope you're able to grasp this key concept and apply it where you see fit. But that's enough from me, I'd like to hear what you guys think. What are your thoughts on the boycott itself? Do you think this is just a one-off instance or do you think this type of boycott could be replicated more often in the future? Let me know in the comments below. And if you made it to the end of the video, I'd really appreciate it if you can go ahead and leave a like on the video and subscribe for more videos like this. Like I said earlier, I'd strongly suggest you check out this video I made where I spoke about the current state of the gaming industry and who's to blame. With all that said, thanks for watching and stay winning.